Hey, thank you for a great question. I use Hebrew Bible because that has become the academic standard, but that is not very common outside of the academy. Old Testament is a Christian designation for usually the same collection of texts. On the Jewish side, uh, my understanding is that Tanakh is the most common designation for the Jewish scriptures, and that would be an acronym that represents Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim, or Law, Prophets, and Writings. Now, these two corpora represent usually the same set of texts, but there are three main differences to them. One is translation. Uh, the Old Testament, when it is translated into English or other languages, is going to prioritize Christian interpretations of the text of the Old Testament. So, for instance, Isaiah 7.14, usually they're going to translate it virgin, or they're going to translate it in a way that is conducive to interpreting it as a prophecy about the virgin birth of Jesus. The Tanakh is never going to be interpreted as a prophecy about the virgin birth of Jesus and is never going to be translated to reflect that. So the two different designations refer to two different traditional interpretations and translations of these texts. They also differ in arrangement. The Tanakh goes Torah, Nevi'im, Ketuvim. So the writings are at the end, and First and Second Chronicles are at the very end of the writings. And so the very last verse of the Tanakh is Cyrus's decree that Adonai has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build a temple in Judah. And so anyone who wants to go up may go up and let them be blessed. And so this is talking about the return from exile. So the Tanakh concludes with this promise of return and this hope for restoration and a new temple. The Old Testament arranges the text differently. We still begin with the Pentateuch, but after the Pentateuch, things start to change. And the Old Testament ends with the prophets, and specifically Malachi, whose book ends with this prophecy about the coming great and dreadful day of the Lord, the return of Elijah. And this sets the table for segueing into Matthew discussing the genealogy of Jesus. So in this way, the Old Testament concludes with a segue into the Messiah as the fulfillment of that prophecy. Now, these two designations can also differ in content. Not only do we have different Christian groups who have different sets of texts that they designate the Old Testament, but in the earliest periods of Christianity, the Septuagint was the authoritative edition of the Old Testament, the ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament. It was considered to be more original, more authoritative than the Hebrew. In fact, many early Christians accused Jewish people of removing the Messianic stuff from their editions of the Hebrew Bible. The reality is that those Messianic things were kind of interpreted in in the translation of the Hebrew Bible into Greek. If you want a good discussion about the role of the Septuagint in early Christianity, When God Spoke Greek by Timothy Michael Law is a wonderful discussion. And um, Timothy was my thesis supervisor when I was at the University of Oxford. He's a wonderful scholar and a wonderful person. We start to shift away from preference for the Greek translation around the year 400. Jerome starts talking about the Hebraica Veritas, or the truth of the Hebrew. But we're still reliant on the Vulgate, the Latin translation, which has all of the same text from the Septuagint, which differ from what the Jewish communities considered their canon, which was based entirely on the Hebrew manuscripts. So the Vulgate differs from the text of the Tanakh for many centuries. And it's not until the Protestant Reformation that folks like Luther and others say, no, we're not going to do the Latin. We're going to go back to the Hebrew manuscripts. And when we do that, guess what isn't there? All the texts that we're now going to uh, cordon off and refer to as the Apocrypha. So starting with Luther, we have Old Testament Apocrypha and then the New Testament. And Protestants used the Apocrypha for many years. But then in the 19th century, the British Foreign Bible Society and the American Bible Society begin to publish editions of the Bible that omit the Apocrypha. And that becomes very popular. And by the end of the 19th century, it becomes the standard to omit the Apocrypha. And now Protestants don't consider the Apocrypha a part of the Bible. So the content of these two designations differs as well. It has changed over the years, but even today, depending on which denomination, which version of Christianity you're talking about, their Old Testament could include many more books than are found in the Tanakh.